As winter turns into spring, the wetland comes to life. The beavers are out foraging for fresh food after spending most of the winter under the ice. The ducks are returning from their winter homes. Signs of life are everywhere, and babies of all varieties will soon be popping up. The green heron, back in its northern breeding ground, prepares to mate. Sometimes mistaken for the bittern or the smaller Virginia rail, the green heron can be identified by its yellowish-orange legs, rust-colored chest, and the dark green head and back for which it is named. Cousin of the taller and better known great blue heron, the short, stocky green heron is a reclusive bird, often heard but rarely seen. Green herons build simple stick nests where the female lays from four to six blue-green eggs. While many birds' nests have a soft lining, there is no such luxury here. The mother and father take turns caring for the eggs. After three weeks of incubation, the hatchlings appear. Almost bald at birth, the awkward-looking babies soon develop a thick gray down that protects them from the elements while their parents are away. Unlike the great blue and other herons who nest in colonies, green herons prefer privacy. Their nests are well hidden and would be nearly impossible to detect if not for the bird's chalk-like droppings. While one parent is on the nest with the chicks, the other is out hunting along the edges of the wetland, looking for almost anything that moves. Insects, leeches, fish, frogs. But fish are their favorite. After a successful hunt, it's back to the nest where the hungry chicks eagerly await their regurgitated meal. Within a few weeks, the hatchlings are ready to explore the world around the nest. Their down, replaced by feathers, they hop from branch to branch. They try out their wings. Their parents keep a close eye on them but it won't be long before the little green herons are on their own. Come September, they will head south for the winter, but with a little luck, they will be back.